5,000 miles around the United Kingdom coastline. 5,000 miles around the UK coastline. When you say it out loud, it seems like a very, very long way. And to do it without a support vehicle, just weekly supply drops, I mean, Make a good TV series. I'd watch it. Shut a man go slowly out of his mind as he's out on an eight-month journey with the very, very basics, bare minimum. Yeah. And with the added, added bonus of internet media and social media, I mean, the interesting twist of the whole thing. I like it. I like the idea. Nervous about doing it, but I like the idea. Another thing is the weather. Good old English weather, I mean, it's going to be nice and cool, don't get me wrong, and wow, at least I'll be able to get some water, I'll be able to boil up some water and drink, drink some water, I collect the rainwater, drink it fresh, you know, it's, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, but fire. Fire. Nothing's dry. So trying to start a fire at night, that could be um, that could be an interesting little task. The more I talk about this, the more problems I kind of find and, and discover, and the more crazy I think I possibly might be. A lot of people would have gone food, how are we gonna do that when I can't give up? Or, or you not even consider the water situation until a lot further down the line and then they go well there's all that water out of it but you know I can't actually drink it all that causing myself serious medical problems but for me that's just another challenge it's like a mini challenge within a challenge so that hasn't dissuaded me For fear of falling from a cliff walking you know say half a day down the beach only to discover that a land landslide is made the beach unpassable you know you're not going to see on all the satellite images what do you do do you walk back add another day to your journey or do you try and climb up yeah again people go on, on you know unnecessary risk but what would it be you have to weigh up the pros and cons what what else is going on at that particular time you know, what's the food situation like? Have you fallen behind? Are you ahead of schedule? Um, you know, what what happens if it goes wrong? What happens if a rock falls on your head or or a ledge gives way? I mean, it's not. It wouldn't be the first time. I mean, I was climbing in Spain and uh, I, I, I picked a quick route to get to the top to set a camera up so I could climb back down and then film myself climbing up. And whilst climbing up to the camera location. Um, the ledge beneath me just, just gave way and I fell oh, a good 12 feet onto another ledge below that and luckily slid, slid to the edge but 
luckily I didn't fall off, but well, because it was another 24 foot drop down to rocks and crashing waves below. So you've got to take into that consideration. I'm going to have uh, you know 15 kilos on the back at least. Hopefully no more, but I'm guessing at least 15 kilos. So you've got to take into that consideration while climbing. I'm not going to have climbing boots. I'm not going to have any kind of safety or protection with me. There's no no person on, a, on the end of a rope to belay me. It's going to be my decision. If I make the wrong decision, then I've got no one else to blame but myself. That sucks. <laughs>